I'm Dr. Catherine Ma. I'm the Canada Research Chair in Promoting Healthy Populations and an Associate Professor at Dalhousie University in the Faculty of Health School of Health Administration. I started my career as a community pediatrician and I can tell you this. People don't choose foods at the doctor's office. They don't choose foods after having reviewed all of the detailed scientific evidence between nutrients, food and health. They choose in community spaces where they live, work, learn and play. Dr. Catherine Ma and the Food Policy Lab from Dalhousie University are researching ways to make buying healthy, affordable food rewarding for eaters, communities, and businesses across Atlantic Canada. The way our grocery stores are set up isn't equitable for everyone. Many people face challenges when budgeting for, purchasing, and consuming healthy foods. There's a ton of different factors that shape how you can shop for food and why this matters a lot to our community's health. Diet-related factors are now the leading cause of death and disability globally, as well as in Canada. One in five deaths is due to what we eat. Nova Scotia has among the highest rates of diet-related diseases in the country. But not everyone in Canada, in Nova Scotia, or in Halifax has equal access to a healthy diet. Food choices are deeply personal, but we don't make our food shopping decisions in a bubble. We choose foods in our neighbourhoods. We choose while commuting to and from work. We choose foods in our communities, in our food systems, and the economy. 70 cents of every household food dollar spent in Canada is spent in a retail food store. The grocery stores have become larger. Um, we've moved a lot of our shopping outside of the mm -hmm. urban core, and so now there's this idea that, you know, well, you go shopping, you do all this big, big shop, you know, once a week, say, and, uh, and, and get everything sorted. And I think it's just a it's a societal pressure that we have. The other piece that when you then encounter the in-store environment or what you find in store are great deals when you buy multiple things, yeah. um, an environment that encourages you to buy in bigger quantities or bigger purchases. We just get in this pattern that we can't picture either getting to the store yeah. in a way that's not our car or we can't picture what we would actually take from the store and how we would get it home yeah. on two wheels. So when I shop by bike or when I'm on foot, it's a totally different shopping experience. Yeah. I take yeah. more time, I have more time to connect with the people who own the stores that I visit, yeah. uh, and I'm more thoughtful about the things I'm buying. Between 2007 and 2012, food prices rose faster than any other component of consumer spending in Canada. Food shopping is not just an individual issue, it's an issue for public policy. This is a chance to use healthy public policy, where we use all of the tools available to us to promote healthy choices for all, no matter where we live. There is an awful lot of public policy that flows from the House of Commons, as you can imagine and as you know. Um, some of those include things like our investments in public transportation. And so if, if someone lives uh, in an environment where there's not a grocery store nearby, well, a reliable bus or subway or some means of public transit becomes really important. Every level has a role to play. The provincial level is very concerned with health because they carry the health care system. So it's reasonable for them to have an interest in healthy eating. As I've mentioned, the federal government can have a role in the food guide. It can have a role in the kind of community infrastructure that we invest in, whether that's housing projects or whether it's uh, transit. And then the municipal level of government, which I'm very familiar with, having spent a career as a city planner right here in Halifax, has a tremendous impact on helping the private sector to make choices about where to set up a grocery store in a food desert. All levels of government really have a role to play with the formation of food policy. I think one of the challenges is that it's quite complex and jurisdictional lines uh, aren't always so clear. It cuts across you know, any one level of government. It cuts across local governments, often across provincial, uh, even sometimes national lines. Mm. And so there's a real need at that level when we think about the natural, let's say, the, the sort of natural way that food systems um, exist and operate. Um, all governments have to get together and coordinate their particular roles to make effective policy. And one of the things we hope to see is some greater consistency um, in, in applying a food lens. And so when you look at some of the planning initiatives that have taken place in HRM in the past couple of years, like the Integrated Mobility Plan or the Green Networks Plan, you see a certain amount of variation in the degree to which food forms a part of those kind of planning processes. And I think the place we hope to get to is you know, where food plays a central role in thinking about some of these other policy domains or priorities and so forth.
whether we're talking about how tall a building is going to be in our city or whether we're talking about um, what our foreign policy should be uh, or whether we're talking about the way that people should get healthy food on their table, there's a role for a citizen's voice in that. It's a business decision. It's a private sector's decision. It's not that they're going there to feed everybody. They are profit-driven, rightfully so, because they're private businesses. It's a market question, right? So we cannot just say, um, you know, governments are not doing anything because governments are really, you know, the product of the community members. So it's both ways, the community empowerment has to happen and also that the politicians and planners and even researchers like us need to be more interested in it to, be, to have a better and deeper conversation about what is it that we need to do. So my name is Jessie Palmer and I'm the owner of Cabbage Patch Kimchi. The longest step, having the product tested, and that can take from two to three months from the testing to being able to sell. For me, the biggest challenge is just having to submit a new food safety report every time I introduce a new product. I do find the officials are very communicative and helpful. There is lots of form you need to be like for safety, for uh, your employees for many things, uh, even for the patio, for example, you need a permit as well for that. Sometimes on Friday and Saturday and Sunday we're working, but the city is not working. You cannot contact anyone on the weekend. These are like little things. When you run a business, you work all week long, no matter what. You don't expect people to work all week as well, but you know, sometimes you can be losing three days just to talk to someone or to have an answer from the city as well. You get to learn as you go uh, by feeling those forms and you get to know the people. You, you have to, as a small business, you need to adapt fast to the demand. In Canadian society, um, we have, uh, we live sort of in an environment of regulations and those regulations are there for, for good reason. They, they keep us safe. Uh, regulations um, promote um, good business. They promote um, uh, good interchange between citizens. So regulations and, and rules are, are important as much as sometimes we chafe against them. But it's really important that when those rules are being written, being made, they, they be made in conjunction with, in conversation with the community that are going to live those rules every single day. Publicly funded institutions such as libraries, schools, recreation centers, or hospitals have a really important role to play in our retail food environment. They're community settings, but they're also places where people buy and consume food. The Halifax Regional Municipality and the province of Nova Scotia have taken some steps over time to improve access to local and healthier options in publicly funded facilities like this. We are locked into a certain way of doing things. Um, it's not necessarily the way that we would like to be doing it, but you know, and I, I often can <laughs> talk about this, you know, in my own research, this idea that healthy behaviour is abnormal behaviour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how do we switch it around so that the healthy behaviour becomes the norm? And, and this is all part of the conversation that we're having today around, uh, you know, health promoting food environments. With so many policies, programmes and people affecting what you eat, it can seem overwhelming. But Dr. Ma wants to make healthy grocery shopping the new normal, no matter where you live. To find out more about the Food Policy Lab's research and more information on how policies affect your grocery shopping experience, check out katherinemaw.ca. In the meantime, everyone can be a little healthier and support your community by following Health Canada's new food guide and shopping with your local businesses whenever possible.